Okay, put your dogs on the box. It's Thursday afternoon at Green Chimneys, a special school 65 miles north of New York City. Okay, how about Thomas? If you have your dog do an off, put it in a heel and have him go back up in, uh, uh, by the table over there. We teach the dogs how to back up. When crossing through doors with a wheelchair, you never know which way the door is going to open. The dogs have to learn to back up straight in front of a wheelchair. This is the basic method that we use to get it started. So practice makes perfect. It's something that we'll have to do a thousand times. Nice job, Thomas. The pupils in Dale Picard's class are training assistance dogs. Yes, yes, good, get it done. Yes, yes, that's it, that's it, good. It's an unconventional lesson, but getting children to work with animals is central to the vision of Green Chimney's founder, Dr. Sam Ross. We see children that uh, have failed in everything in school. They're bullied. Uh, they, they can't make friends easily. Uh, they don't understand messages. And as a result, they're either put out of school or, a, or not allowed to mix with children in the community. They're considered odd. But here, uh, in the association with the animals, for which they become the master of record, they be the, become the caretaker, and they see the value of their own worth, uh, we turn them around and make them much more successful. You're a mirror of the dog. Yeah. The dog's a mirror of you. So if you're doing good, the dog will do good. Yeah, and, and when, vice you, versa. when you learn, when you teach the dog, it, when you like, don't get angry. If you get angry, it starts to protect you right there. It starts to shut down. Yep. Green Chimneys first opened in 1947 as a private school. Over six decades, Sam Ross and his team have acquired a reputation for outstanding work with children that mainstream schools couldn't cope with. The school has some day pupils from the surrounding area, but over half board on site as part of a full-scale residential treatment facility. They range in age from 6 to 18 and have a variety of special needs, including anxiety, depressive, bipolar and attention deficit disorders. Places at the school are mostly publicly funded. The assistance dog program will see pupils teach the dogs around 90 commands over the course of two years. But the pupils are learning vital skills too. Uh, to me, working through frustration is a skill. Working through stress is a skill. Finding your confidence is another skill. So it changes the character of the student and builds, we build off that character to build their confidence up so sooner or later they can get discharged and move on to the, the real world and back to our normal school. We teach the dogs how to lift up their legs and fix their leash so if the disabled person gets all tangled up with the leash, a dog can fix its own leash on command. Fix it, fix it, tell her. Yes, good. Good, we still have a little ways to go. When they first start training the dogs, they're eight, nine weeks old, so they have to pick them up and really handle them. And, and all that cuddling and, and, and hugging really starts something new in their life that they didn't know about. They didn't know how to love. Now they're starting to learn how to fall in love with something. And it's like everything else. You fall in love with one thing and it goes off to the next. And sooner or later, you have happy kids. <laughs> But Green Chimneys is much more than just a school with dog training classes. Alongside the school and treatment facility, it's also a 165-acre farm with 200 farm animals. There's also a wildlife centre and a busy programme of other animal-related activities. They so, like work on animals and all that stuff. Usually, I just feed the an I feed the animals. I climb the wall, the hills, up a hillside up there. We do lots of stuff. It's really fun. We actually feed them during like three o'clock and four o'clock. Yeah.
Paul Kupchak has spent 20 years running the Farm and Wildlife Centre. The children here at Green Chimneys come to the Farm and the Wildlife Centre the way you and I may have gone to music, gym or art when we were in school. It, are, it is a built-in program that runs through the school. Today, Paul is using an American falcon to teach Frank, Dean and Peter about birds of prey. So I'm going to give you guys a chance to hold this bird and feel what it feels like to be that close and actually in control of him, okay? His teaching exemplifies Sam Ross's vision of using nature to help children learn. How does that feel? Good. You ever think you'd have a falcon on your fist? No. Good feeling, isn't it? Yeah. Does it make you wonder why anybody would ever want to shoot or hurt one? Because they're they probably feel like they're jealous that they don't have a bird like this or something. Yeah, it's just it's just a it's a terrible thing. And by you holding this bird, I hope you'll realize that it's a bad thing and you'd never let that happen if you could prevent it. And you'd never do it, would you? No. Good. That's important, Frank. That's one of the lessons of working with the wild animals, is to respect them and to understand them and to let them live their wild, natural life. Next, a golden eagle, blind in one eye, helps Paul get a message through to the boys. His disability means that he's going to have to live here at Green Chimneys for the rest of his life which I like you kids to understand because it shows all of us that you can live with a disability and you can thrive with a disability. I know some of us don't read as good as others. Some of us don't speak as good as others. But that doesn't mean we can't grow and we can't live and we can't have wonderful, happy lives. Sometimes things come at us in life that we're not quite um, sure why they come or, or why we're chosen to have these disabilities, but it doesn't stop us from moving on and working with them. I like to be at Green Chimneys because my teachers help me, staff help me, and when I'm like angry or something, I come up at the farm and wildlife and visit the animals that I like here and they really help me calm down. On the board, we have in pink or red, whatever color that is, uh, some of our new science words. Okay, let's go over the first couple. Let me point to them, you guys can say them with me. Okay. First one is gill cover. Sam Ross's philosophy also inspires classroom lessons at Green Chimneys. The natural world plays a big part in the teaching. Peter Guasta di Segni, better known as Mr. G, is the school's science teacher. Okay, Nick, do you have a question? Yes, does fish have teeth? So when they Some eat do, them, yeah. Do they have yeah, teeth? Yeah, yeah, some have sharp teeth. Oh. These pupils are working on a project to raise trout. It will culminate in the fish being released into a local river that needs restocking. But for now, his class is getting to grips with fish physiology. Look how many fins there are. You thought there was just a fin, right? Well, each of them are different. Each of them do different things to help the fish swim. The first one here, the gill cover. That's not kind of simple, right? What does it do? To cover the gills. It just covers the gills. Very good. Helps protect it because the gills are a very, very fragile organ. Take the word and put it to where it goes. Okay, so I'll do the first one for you. I'm making their classroom experience more interactive through the use of the smart board in particular. Um, there are three styles, major styles, that all kids learn. They, they're either auditory learners, they're visual learners, or they're tactile learners. They have to touch and feel things. They automatically get the auditory part because I love to speak and they get it from my lecture. But the smart board gives them a great visual and also gives them the tactile modality of learning. They can come up to the smart board and touch it. There you go. Great job. Awesome. Pupils' progress in learning and behavior is sometimes slow. But every so often, there's a breakthrough. One boy had presented Mr. G with serious behavior management problems for six months. One class, he, he had a terrible class, and I sat down with him after his class left. I sat down and I talked about a few things. The next class he came here, one girl in his class had a particular incident with another boy, and she ran out of the classroom. The child who I had a problem with went outside the classroom and counseled her and actually got her to bring her back into the classroom. He talked her down. He was able to 
to express some emotions that he had and he was able to bring her back to the classroom and they both of them had a great rest of the day. And that's that breakthrough moment. It's not the academics. It's when they really get a hold of themselves and they can help others. Our kids will challenge you every day and say, you know, there's nothing in me to love, there's nothing in me to uh, uh, be successful, but you can find it. And I think, um, you know, the best teachers and the best uh, people I look for are the ones that have that quality, that, uh, can, that can understand that. I'm going to catch it with the net and I'll bring it back over here and we'll check out those four or five things that we felt were really important for a bird to survive. For the last three months, Paul has been nursing a red-tailed hawk that was shot. Now it's ready to go back to the wild. On average, children at green chimneys stay 20 months, but it can be several years before they return home. Whatever the length of stay, Paul sees parallels between his animal patients and his human charges. Here at Green Chimneys, we find out that a lot of the injured wildlife comes to us very similar to the way a lot of children come to us. They come hurt, they come broken, they come unwanted, they come abandoned. And our goal is not only to fix and heal animals, but to fix and heal children. All his primary and secondary feathers are in line. Mm -hmm. Got good muscle tone. So I think we're in good shape as far as his wings are concerned. So I'm thinking today's a good day to set him free. What, yep. do, you, what do you yep. guys think? Yep. Yeah. Special, special day. Okay. I like to pick this field to let the birds go because it gives us a chance to see how they're taking off and how they're doing. It, to me, it's very understandable that this bird is nervous today. Nervous because it's in my hands and nervous because it's going back out into the wild. When the day comes when you guys are going back home, I'll bet you'll be nervous too. You know, we really hope that when the animals heal, the kids are also getting healed and that you kids are trying to get a chance, a second chance, just like the animals are getting a second chance mm -hmm. at getting things right in your life. I know this, that uh, when I dreamed of the idea, I said I wanted to open a school on a farm where the children would be surrounded by animals. Now, it's not the panacea for all children's problems, but it's a way to break the cycle of failure. I wish you hope I hope you find your family and good luck. Perfect, Frank. I hope you have a good time with your family and wish you good luck. Okay, okay guys, on the count of three, we'll gently pitch them right up into the sky and we're gonna send them home. Okay. Okay? One, One two, two, three. three. Oh, that's good. Isn't that beautiful? Yep. Keep going home.